went to Radio Shock, got these items right here. Um, the rest came from the hardware. So we'll just go over some things. This actually is three quarter inch PVC. I call it one inch because it's approximately one inch, but it's actually three quarters. Got this little coupler. Um, these fluorescents were, gosh, really cheap. Um, four ninety seven, I think, for all four of these. I got this for a base. This actually is a ceiling canopy kit, but we're going to use this for our base and run our electronics underneath it. Um, I had this bell wire, but you can also get this at Radio Shack. Um, so let's let's talk about these. These are Germanian um, diodes. Okay. Um, this is the most economical way to buy transistors, and you can just try these. They're all NPN. They'll do the same thing. Um, I got two little slide switches, so we can turn this on and off. And I think this is really important. Don't skip this. Um, these are eight-pin sockets, 59 cents for two of them. So if you want to make two lamps, you got enough. This is going to make it so much more convenient when you go to plug in a transistor and decide you want to change it or you burn a transistor out because you put it in backwards. Um, so we're going to wire to these uh, integrated circuit sockets, okay? Um, 30 gauge wire, you can get 200 feet of this um, at Radio Shack and it's enough for about a 500 turn coil. And um, that's all you need. Um, so I will show you next how to take these apart and get what you need out of them. All right, so here's the CFL bulb, and instead of calling this gutting it, we're going to call it modding. Okay, so we're going to mod this ball. So we're going to put our screwdriver in here and just kind of wiggle it apart. It's not that hard, just kind of pop it open, work around. Okay, once you get it apart, what's in there is a circuit board. There's wires that run to the bottom, so just take it and twist it until you can break those wires off, because we don't need those. And this is just going to come apart. You can wiggle this out. Or what's probably better, so you don't break anything, is just pry it out real slow. It's really, it's really quite simple. Just don't be rough with it. Okay, we have this. This is the bit we want. And if you see here, there's two little wires coming off each tube, fluorescent tube. And we're, we're going to, when we're done, just twist those together. We're going to connect here and here. But we'd kind of like this base. So what I do, if you look in here, it's connected at the bottom. I'm just going to drill a nice hole here with my drill. And then we can run our wires up through here and preserve this base. Okay, so I'm going to do that and I'll show you. Alright, I drilled like an eighth inch hole. I just poke it out. It's basically a rivet. So you just got to drill that rivet out. Okay, so now what we've got is a little hole through this thing we can feed our high tension wire through. And that's going to go through plastic, which is kind of nice so it won't hurt the wiring. If you're industrious, there's quite a few little parts on the circuit board that could be useful. So you may want to throw it in your junk drawer. You're going to find this inductor is used in a lot of jewel thieves. So I want to explain to you why you might want to make this uh, this lamp, this Lynx lamp that I'm going to show you how to make. Um, first of all, if you try and run a lamp off a uh, inverter, typical inverter off 12 volt system. It takes a lot of amps. It's not very efficient. So while you, you know, you're collecting free energy from the sun through your solar panel or, you know, your wind turbine, and you're charging batteries, and then it seems a shame to use um, an inverter and run an incandescent bulb. Just the worst thing you could do because it just kills the battery. Inverter's going to shut down. So if um, if you really want to be efficient about using solar or wind energy or you know, a steam-powered system. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a lamp that will draw 10 times less power than a typical light bulb. Um, you could run a lot more. You could run 10 of them for 
you know, the amperage that it would draw if you uh, were using incandescence. Um, why you might want to make this thing for fun, it might be a school project, um, everybody's got their reasons. Um, you know, if, if you're trying to, uh, say, power lighting in your boat, your cabin, or for emergencies, whatever, this is a great little system. Um, once you learn how to make this, uh, you can make it You can make it bigger, make more of them, um, and I'll show you how you can add bulbs as we go. Okay? Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this uh, works out for you guys. All right, since we still have the drill out, um, we are going to uh, do a little planning on this. First, put your um, connector on. You don't have to put it on real tight or it'll be hard to get off. Just just put it on. And then make make a mark, a little mark where we're going to put a hole just below it. You just want that just below it. The other side, put a mark down here. Just, just far enough up that we don't lose any material. We want the hole to be in it. Okay, something like that. Now we're going to drill all the way through. We still have our eighth inch drill, and it doesn't have to be perfect. But our wires are going to uh, go through this and down. Okay, so all our exiting wires are going to exit inside the tube for a nice clean finish, so we don't have wires hanging out. And this is going to end up being on there. If you can see that. Like that. And all our wires from the bulb and the coils go down through here and we'll mount our electronics underneath for a nice clean finish. This is a winder that I kind of rigged up. It's just an old um, piece of sheet metal. You could use wood or something. Um, this is a three-quarter dowel and I just drilled it and, and ran a stud into that. You could put a little bolt in there and it's got a washer. So we can turn it here. Just kind of holds it stable. Just gonna make it easier and then we'll just put our little electric drill on this end. And we I'm going to stop right at the hole. It's nice if you have a piece of tape ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and tape around this just to hold this. And you can clip the wire off. You just need, again, about six inches. Okay, so that's all done. Okay, so this is the completed high voltage part of the coil. Call this the secondary. This is the part that is going to pick up. And these wires are on the inside of the tube. Okay, so that's all done.